Stop it. Really? It's too much? Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Terry Ivins because Ian is sick with the flu and he can't say my name from his bed, even though this is going to bed with Terry Ivins. I'm so excited that you're with me. I've got uh, just an absolute stellar show tonight. It's very cool. I have this amazing young actor that not only was nominated for an Emmy, but he put together a, a Kickstarter campaign that was so successful that he went above and beyond his budget, over 20 grand, which is really pretty amazing. Freddie Smith is with me tonight. Yeehaw! <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, enough about Freddie. Don't applaud too much. Don't wait till he gets out here. And then I have a really special treat for you. I have... Eric Melgren of Shotgun Honeymoon. Oh my gosh, singer songwriter and a poet. You didn't know it. <laughs> and 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 he'll be performing live for us tonight, which is pretty cool. But first, Tony, Tony, Tony. Yes, my dear. Ah, oh, my mentor oh, and my please. savior right now because please. otherwise I'd be back there pushing buttons and you wouldn't hear me or see me. Well, hopefully I'll do my job. I, yeah. <laughs> I have no worries. How was your week? My week was great. Yeah? Yeah. What about yours? Oh, my gosh. My week, we had a, a slumber party this weekend. Actually, it was a little more than a slumber party. It was a happy unbirthday party. And it was filled with a bunch of eight-year-old little girls. So, you know, we got it on. We played Twister. We had an actual, well, first let me tell you what an unbirthday is. We invited all of my girls' BFFs, and we celebrated all of their birthdays all at once. So everybody got presents. Everybody got to blow out candles on the cake. Actually, I, took, I brought a picture of the cake. I'm looking at the cake right now, D- and I want to stick cute? my finger in it. Oh, I do. my gosh. The lady that wrote Happy Unbirthday, she was so tickled. She's like, I've never done that before. <laughs> first times but um so yeah we had decorations and presents and it was uh it was a lot for me to undertake and and i go to get the dre- uh, the decorations i go to party city and there's a big sign on the door that says uh shortage an actual global shortage of helium so there was no balloons. Can you believe that? Yeah, the too many people like to, yeah. Yeah, well, what am yeah. I supposed to do trying to put the kids <laughs> to sleep? You know, if we can't make voices right. and each of them have a couple balloons each, you know, to knock them out. But I, seriously, you know, uh, there's a, a, a global helium shortage. That's so crazy. It, it is. I mean, Who it's a natural help? gas, right? Yeah. Actually, we're outside of my hometown, about 20 miles. Are you from Amarillo? No, actually in Kansas. Really? That was the first place they ever discovered uh, helium. Really? Yeah. Because I looked it up online, and Amarillo, Texas, (laughs) is, uh, well, actually now, used to be the capital of of helium. helium. Wouldn't you like to be known for that? (laughs) Yeah, right? They supply 42% of all of the market. I wonder if that's where you got the munchkin's voice. From Armorilla. Yeah, sucking helium. Yeah, of They're course. Like, oh, that sounds good. Let's use that for the yeah. Wizard of Oz. I am a lollipop <laughs> kid. I, well, it was depressing. I mean, f- me personally, because yeah, we can have a birthday party without floating helium balloons. I ended up spending like $110 in crepe paper trying to decorate when it's so much easier just to float some balloons, you know? <laughs> But um, no worries, because the government can solve this problem, unlike everything else. Congress agreed unanimously to um, to oh, 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 to enact the Stewardship Act, and uh, yes, because the government actually has like eight point six billion cubic feet of helium that has been stored for us, and so oh if if Obama actually <laughs> signs this bill. Right. This is hilarious. Yeah, no, this is yeah. the truth too. If Obama signs this bill, which he says he will, 
um, then the government will be able to sell the, this 8.6 cubic feet of uh, helium on the private market. And guess what? The government stands to make $200 million. That's like a nickel. Right. Not even a nickel. Is that crazy? That is crazy. We can't agree on anything like Obamacare or Affordable helium, Care right. Act. And most people don't even realize they're the same thing and they're arguing about <laughs> it. But our Congress can come together within moments and decide that, yes, we must uh, you know, for, you know, the get kids a piece parties. of the pie for the helium. Yeah, their kids need balloons for their parties. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I, the only way I got them to go to sleep was I did the, the Jedi mind trick on them. And I told them that... They weren't allowed to go to sleep, that they could stay up as long as they wanted, and whoever fell asleep was going to get pranked by me. <laughs> You're were, such a great mama. I know, right? They fell asleep so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they were, I, I go in, because then, you know, when it's quiet, they're like termites. Then you know they're going to tear your house apart, right? <laughs> you don't see them or hear them. <laughs> danger, danger. But I go in there, and they're all like, oh. Like, my daughter's all straight up <laughs> they're out which so i'm like you know that's so cute so i looked up like sleep positions this is really cute the sleep that's a hilarious so yeah if you're looking at these sleep positions so my daughter's hands are straight up her face is like dug into a pillow blanket that actually there is a personality trait for people that sleep like that and it so fits her because she is fun and fantastic at parties that is, is that <laughs> hilarious? It's called the free fall. Yes. And then there's these other great ones, you know, like, uh, you know, the starfish where you're all sprawled out. It means you're a great listener. I, I tend to be like that after I've had a few. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're a great listener after you drink. <laughs> right, because I'm passed out. She's <laughs> <laughs> so easy to back. talk to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, yeah. I guess before I got married, I was probably a free fall straight up and down great at parties. And then I, I going through my divorce, they think I was more, you know, I don't know, maybe the log, a social butterfly, right? Side, side. But now that the divorce is final and everything, I'm more back into the fetal position. I love the soldier. It just looks like you're like, mm. you know, I dated <laughs> like a guy. A corpse. I dated a guy that, that slept like a soldier, which is called, you know, the, yeah, he's reserved. And he would say before, well, okay, so we fool around or whatever. Okay, mom, close your ears. <laughs> and then he would say, what? you know, do you do you need anything else? Like, And I'd be like, what? Do you what? need anything <laughs> else? Yeah, yeah write or you it want down. To know if I needed pillow talk oh. or needed some... I don't know. And then I, I and I said no, and he's like, "Okay, are you serious?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good." And he was out within like five seconds, hands folded like a soldier, out. He wasn't kidding, <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't move all night. And like this I was barely. Your boyfriend? No, of course he didn't make it oh, that far. I was gonna say, Lord, you sleep like that. <laughs> I mean, You're come like, on. Wow, yeah. It's a high, high bar to be a boyfriend. <laughs> I'm going to have to write this stuff down. <laughs> crazy, crazy nut. Uh, I found this picture of a photo shoot that I did, and uh, it's pretty sexy. It's uh, got uh, three yeah. naked guys in. You have to show me that every week, and I just get jealous. Yeah. Isn't that a good one? <laughs> I know. Beautiful picture. Thank you. I, I, it kind of ties in about sleeping positions. See how I'm sleeping there? <laughs> Eyes wide open. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like when prison, right? Yeah. Right. And look at the guys. They're, you know, they're all their heads. They're, we've got one that's, uh, we got them all. We got the log. We got the yearner. I think that's uh, Rib Hill is there. And the yearner is perceived as open, but truly suspicious. <laughs> I love you, Rib. But yeah, so I don't know. I, I dug out that picture too because it kind of dealt with the sleeping thing. And I, it seems like a... Well, you know, like a sex addict or something in there, which bridges so well into the transition of my guest, well, Ray Smith. I was going to say, that's not what I heard about Terry, okay? Yeah. Just saying. I know. Just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, everyone. I'm Jack Briggs. I'm Nate Hartley. And I'm Freddie Smith. And we are the creators of Addicts Anonymous. Welcome to our Kickstarter page. What you're about to see is a trailer to give you an idea of what our show will be like, as well as introduce you to some of the characters. And the reason we're coming to Kickstarter is so that we can raise the funds so that we can bring you season one of our web series. We've got some crazy, cool, awesome incentives, so check those out on the side of the page. 
And now, please, sit back, relax, and enjoy the trailer. Roll it! Hi, uh, I'm Gary Goldberg, and I'm the president, uh, the founder, if you will, of Addicts Anonymous. The unique thing about my class is that I handle all addictions in the same room, all at the same time. <laughs> I'm so stoned right now. <laughs> Ron? This is bullshit, Gary! And you fucking Ron. know it! I did what? I threw a chair. I don't believe you. I got caught drinking a beer in my dorm. Just, just one. Bullshit. Uh, hey guys, I'm Janie, and I'm a sex addict. Whoa, hey, hey, hey! Come on, what are you guys, barn animals? I'll be honest, I, I think she took it the wrong way, but uh, she was in the car behind me, and I pulled out my penis, and I ran at the car with it. Whoops. Oh. Boom! Gonorrhea. <laughs> that is way too personal. I'm not answering that. It says it right there. No smoking, no lighters. There's no absolute... Oh my god! <laughs> we burn this place to the ground. Yeah. One time I took the last cookie and he couldn't use it in his coffee. And it upset him. Okay, this obstacle course is a metaphor for life. So don't think of these ten bricks as bricks. You think of them as calories. Oh, Jesus, oh. just skip the tunnel, skip oh, the tunnel. I'm stuck, I'm stuck. People say it's OCD, but I, I know. It's an addiction. Let's hope I don't wake up with an erection this time. <laughs> Todd, are you being a lion? Yes. Todd, yeah. what are you doing? I was just making some art. You're gonna hurt yourself with those bricks. Okay. The services I do for people. I mean, I service everyone here. Uh, you know, because at the end of the day, these people are addicts, and they need my help. There's a rumor that the Alaskan Thunderfuck marijuana tree literally is about 25 feet long, and you grow it in Alaska because it's like all day long over there. Like, literally. See, I told you it was good. And I know that a lot of you already saw it because so many of you are contributors. So let me, without any further ado, Freddie Smith, Mr. Salzazar, Mr. Kiriakis, and Mr. Nominated Young Actor for a Daytime Any. Freddie Smith, I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> yeah. With a lot of applause. I know, we've got a good audience. We I do. really appreciate them. They take direction really well, so I'm like, good. They just do it. It's good. They're a lot of love. So, first question I want to ask you, what position do you sleep in? <laughs> I sleep on my left side. Left side. Left what does that side. Mean? Left side. You're a cider. Uh, you're a log. You're a social butterfly. Social butterfly. Yeah. Does that fit? Does you think that's I think it fits, right? yeah. Okay. For the most part. It's just most comfortable. I can't sleep on my back. Or on my stomach, it feels uh -huh. uncomfortable. So you're not reserved because that's a back sleeper, and you're not a big partier because that's a tummy sleeper. You're just that'd be like passing out. That's different than going to bed. No, is that a little? We different? all have a pass out. <laughs> yeah, that's position. Different. <laughs> but I'm a log. Okay, you're a log. So I am. Uh, there's a, a, about a billion questions from your friends because I actually tweeted today. Oh, if you have any questions for Freddie, why don't you give me a tweet? Okay, I will never do that again. My entire timeline was like filled with all of you wonderful people, which by the way, Freddie, I want you to look right into that camera right there. That's yours. I want you to say, Isabel. Isabel, from France, actually. Yes, you know I her. love you. Oh. And thank you for being such an awesome fan and for being up at this hour if it's 3 a.m. I got your back, girl. Told yeah. you. <laughs> nice. So thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. I love you. Okay, then that awesome big score. I know she's like jumping up and down right now and following me on Twitter. So what about uh, Tennessee? I heard that you were going to have the, uh, an Addicts Anonymous event. Is that yeah, true? That is true. Yes, we have the entire cast and creators and some people from Days of Our Lives, uh, Ari Zucker and Kate Mancy and uh, Melissa Reeves. Ooh. 
Ooh. We're all coming down. So there's going to be about 16 of us, and we're going to be premiering the six episodes for the first time before it hits the web. And if you have any interest, anyone out there, um, to attend, you can get your tickets at dualcoastevents.com. We're going to be doing a tour of the Jack Daniels Distillery. <gasps> what I find fascinating, which everyone knows this already, but I'm filling you in on this. They make Jack Daniels there, but it's a dry county. So you can't actually... That's how they keep their money. That's how they, yeah. You know? Because like a, a successful drug dealer does not do drugs. Is that true? Yeah. Have you ever met Terry a drug dealer that does drugs? No, nobody. That's, that's wise. That's why because they're successful. Because they know it kills. Alcohol is bad. And Jack knows. So he just makes it to limit our population because we're overpopulated and everyone's on the freeways here She in LA. took it that place. But... <laughs> Tennessee is going to be great. Now, we're going to have a screening. We're going to do a tour. And uh, so we'd love for you to come by. And um, if not, we will be airing Addicts in the next month or so. Where? Where? How do I find uh, it? On our website, addictsanonymous.tv. TV. Yes. So we're going to have the, we have the whole thing built, getting ready to launch. So, so everything is done. You've, you've got it all in the can. You've got, what, six eight-minute episodes? Is six. That right? That's what we're, yeah, we're cutting it down to get to about eight episodes, but it's been uh, an eight-month process, and it, it, it's, but it's been fun, but we're really excited for it to be out there. Yeah, we've been talking about it for so long, and now it, you know, can be real once we get it out there. Okay, I've got a question about your character. I, I read that you're a neurotic, impotent addict. Isn't that kind of like an oxymoron? A neurotic impotent? Impotent. Is that, do they misspell something? I what think are, so. What are you? What's your character? He's he's just a, he's a, like a lovable idiot. He's just, he has the biggest heart. He wants what's best for these students of his, but he just doesn't know how to do anything correctly. So he's just like this goober. Ah. You know what I mean? But he's got a good heart and he, yeah. he, he's, he's really finding himself more than the students are being helped. He, it, this class is actually helping him more than it is the students. So it's just like that you know comedy about everyone finding themselves and how did uh it, it, now it's a mock mockumentary mockumentary so was was it scripted it was scripted yeah we have great improvers so we we did about three takes of the script and then the Let last take we're like just have fun do whatever you want what did you end up well i don't want to give things away but right you probably loved the, the improv stuff. yeah it was about 50 50. Oh, as long okay. as it went with the story we were able to cut it in and we shot with multi-cam so you could improv and everything work so it didn't you know it was great and we, we had just such talented people and we just had a blast it's what i really want to yeah very strong do. cast yeah. that's yeah. awesome so did you get to direct at all or are you producing uh, what are you yeah we kind of did it all there was four of us and we wrote created direct produced act in it so it was a uh, it was the whole package and it's a lot of work behind the camera us actors are spoiled on how right? easy it really is i know you just show up perform and you're done right you're, one, yeah. after this is you know completely done you're going to go back to being an actor and demanding your breakfast burrito and your trailer and never complain ever again because they put too much makeup on you exactly you know this has taught me a lesson doesn't it yeah be thankful for what you got exactly i'm proud of you well thank you i am i really am okay so i, I gotta give a big shout out to south africa because they're watching Hi, South Africa. Um, Miss Laura Alice. Did I get that right? At Laura Alice. It's a, a Twitter handle. She wants to know, what is your favorite song? <sighs> at the moment. At the moment. This is going to sound so ridiculous. But I'm a huge fan of Drake. And his new album just came out. Yeah. And the song Pound Cake is really good. <laughs> I don't know if you... I haven't heard it. No, it's good. Him but and Jay-Z. Him and Jay-Z. Pound Drake, Cake. Br yeah, Pound Cake. It makes my mind go somewhere else. It goes into many different directions. <laughs> but it's a good song. But it, every month I have a new favorite song. Oh, really? Right now it's Pound Cake. Is That's probably why they're asking, because they follow you month to month to fill up their iTunes. That's why people follow me. They just want to know what my favorite song is every month. Wow. They have no interest Gosh. in my career. Just what is my favorite song? God, to have such a great following like that. Mm -hmm. Do you know German? Because Katja says that you do, and she wants to know what words of German you still remember. Oh, this is going to be disappointing because I don't remember any of them. Oh. But I had a great time at the moment when I was, you know, learning. learning. But those are things you have to continue to do every day to learn. That's true. It's like golf. It's like golf, which I also don't know how to play. Do you play golf? Yes. 
You play golf? Yeah. That's awesome. I need to learn. Everyone yeah. out here plays golf, and I don't. So everyone's like, hey, let's all get together and play golf. Well, and yeah, that's where you do the deals. I know. You know, if you don't play golf, you're not going to get any deals. That's why I just know Riley, and he gets me all the deals. <laughs> <laughs> he plays golf. <laughs> He has a huge handicap, but you know what? He gets me. <laughs> hey, gets me whatever gigs. works. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't have a handicap. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so, do you have travel plans? Because I know a lot of your fans want you to travel to the UK, to Canada, to do meet and greets. Is this already in the works? It's uh, it's in the future. I really, I've never been overseas before, so I really want to take a trip next summer and just hit up a lot of places. Um, I've pretty much been everyone in the U.S., which is great. And I just got back from traveling. Went to Boston for my first time, Chicago for my first time. Oh, isn't Boston beautiful? Boston. Old America. It's so nice. Yeah. I fell in love with it. Like, I, my hotel was right by the, the big park. Fenway? No, not the... the, the uh, <laughs> it's the only park I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know. It's like just the, the, the park in general. Like, you can run and there's like lakes and shit you know oh yeah excuse me can i swear on this show yes all right then i'll have to say excuse me anyway um but no it was just really nice it kind of had that like midwest but yet big city feel yeah i don't know it's like it's really cool i love the uh sidewalks over there with the shopping area i don't know what it's called but the cobblestone sidewalks from like the era of the 1800s it's really cool it's a great city it's where kate spade's shop is yeah what do you got in that cup uh, <laughs> i have monster <laughs> ding <laughs> do you like my cup everyone look at that that's you Isn't i actually it? got a, uh, a a mug from a fan and they had my picture on it well they give you a picture of yourself of myself but what i do to, to piss what my friends off is i give them loves. coffee when my friends come out they come out with some coffee and, and i make it. them drink out of a mug with my face that's on what it. i'm gonna do with this yeah okay, it so makes everyone uncomfortable and you en you'll enjoy yourself okay great i'm gonna call it a freddy oh i'm just yeah. doing a freddy exactly <laughs> Here, have some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to play a game with me? I have um, this I would love to. great game called 22 Second Fling. 22 seconds? Uh-huh. All right. Let's see if I can make it. Uh-huh. <laughs> That was me singing. <laughs> so 22 second fling is 22 seconds of yes and no questions. Only yes, only no. Okay. And you at home, you can take uh, your own running tally of what questions are correct for your personal fling. And do we have a clock? And we're getting ready for the clock. Oh, and we're ready? Okay, ready? Okay. Do you leave socks on the floor? Yes. Do you flagellate in bed? Yes. Can you make a bacon egg cheese sandwich? Yes. Are you a better lover in the morning? Mm, no. Do you snore? <laughs> no. Are you monogamous? Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. Ah, oh, dang. Do you do you like children? Yes. Oh. Can you fix household things? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so at home, go look at your tally of, um, and you can show the, the scorecard, the results, how many he has right. You just have to watch the show in reruns to see how you did. <laughs> Keeper in training. Been there, done that. <laughs> it was awesome to have you. It was awesome being here. You know, I would love for you to come back if you would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know exactly how to find you all the time because I'm going to hunt you down for all of your girl fans all over the world and take like little I Spy photos. Will you do that? Will you do an I Spy for me? You can't, uh, really you won't know, but you won't get mad if I So you're just kind of taking around. pictures of me when I'm not aware? Actually, a, you know, like a little film. Oh, just a film. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I think that'd be great. As yeah. long as I don't know about it, I mean, shit. Okay, yeah, great. That would be, be good. Awesome. Okay, so we have I Spies with Freddie Smith to look forward to. All right, so I've got a very, very special treat while Freddie needs to take off. I'm so bummed. Uh, my next guest, Eric Melgren, with his amazing, awesome music video that you're going to completely love called Up to Something. <laughs> And I, 
Two points. I scored at the winning second. Yay! Wasn't that awesome with the rabbit head? And like, I've watched it to say, you know, like what actually is happening, but like every character is actually up to something. It's good, isn't it? Clever. It's got a great hook. And without any further of my mouth, Eric Melgren, welcome! Shotgun Honeymoon. I love discovering a new indie band. I feel like I have, uh, but you're not just a musician. No. We're actually here to discuss this amazing book. We have things. We have things. Yeah. This amazing book that he wrote. Oh, my gosh. And it's illustrated by this awesome guy. Casey Howard. Casey Howard. He's the man. How did you guys meet? How did you hook up with this amazing illustrator? You know, uh, I met him through, uh, you know, through a few friends and just through networking, really. And what he does is he designs uh, band merch. And so, you know, that's sort of his craft. And uh, I just kind of approached him casually and just like, hey, you know, would you be interested in doing a project like this? And we just he was down to do something that was sort of outside the box of what he was already doing. So it was it was pretty rad. That's awesome. Yeah. It was it, nice it, because it's kind of, you know, it's not every day, you know, you go to hey, you want to do like a like a children's book, you know what I mean? Well, right. But like it's good. I you know, I'm going to read a little excerpt later, but I want to find out like okay, so how did you how did this project come about? I mean, cuz you're a, a, a lyricist, right? So how did you 
like have you always written poetry what what was it that made you just stop singing and start writing well um i grew up uh reading shel silverstein like he's the bomb you know the giving tree where the sidewalk ends all that good stuff and uh i kind of felt like that is what took me to be a songwriter and then uh, you know doing that for quite a while uh i i took a i took some time off uh writing and singing and i needed to fill it with something else artistic and I kind of just lended, you know, to that. And I was like, hey, I need to I need to do something else. Maybe I won't just dive into this, you know. Well, you, wait, you said you took some time off. Is there a reason why? You yeah, took some I, time I off? had a, uh, I, I lost my voice for um, I lost my speaking voice for about six months. How did that happen? Uh, I, uh, I was playing basketball <gasps> and I He's got an athlete. Yeah, I was playing basketball. I got elbowed in the throat. I popped. What? A, yeah, I popped a blood vessel in my throat in it. Oh, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it set things back a little bit. <laughs> and you got your your. Did they think like your was your Adam's apple was crushed or something? Um, like, no, no. Uh, you know, I had to go see my ENT, and and it was uh, it actually popped blood vessel like on my vocal cord. Oh. So it just it, what it does is your vocal cords flame up, and when your vocal cords are inflamed, they can't do what they need to do. Right. Which is when people get you know a, a horse and all that oh all that stuff. is that it yeah we've like popped a blood vessel or something no 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah that's not happening <laughs> well i mean maybe i don't know <laughs> wow so how long were, were you not singing and this um, is when you're with the band too right yeah so you're this with is... shotgun honeymoon and then you get injured playing basketball yeah so the band's probably not that happy no yeah i put out um uh, i put out a record uh called foregone conclusion and uh like it literally happened right after that. Oh, yeah. That's not great timing. Yeah, no. But what you've created is so great. Yeah. And this book. So you we put in all your lyrical writing into into poems. I want can I read? Yeah, I want, for sure. I, I seriously, like I once I started I couldn't put it down. I mean it's it's really okay. This is called the Candy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Sally wished and wished her fingers into pops. She even wished her eyes into sour patch dots. She loved candy so much, she wished her feet into bars, the ones made of chocolate, not the small, but the large. A jolly rancher nose and Tootsie Roll toes, a gummy worm tongue, and she's only just begun, turned her ears into her favorite starburst mix. And even when she sneezed, she sneezed out pixie sticks. Her arms made of Twizzlers and her legs a hundred grand, whatchamacallit teeth and lath taffy hands. Her lips made of gum so she could always chew that bubblegum taste to blow bubbles at you. Her belly button a pez that never ran out until her body was gone, except for her mouth. <laughs> Isn't that clever? I, it's awesome. And then the illustration, I, I, I should have gotten a picture of the illustration for this, because like, this guy is amazing of what he draws. He has this little girl in here that is me. I, I'm like, this has got to be me. Is she in here? Can I find her fast? Yeah. She's got long... She might be in the front. Straggly hair. Where is she? Oh, man. Oh, there she is. Yeah. She's got long baseball cap on backwards. You <laughs> yeah. You know, three-quarter under baseball shirt on. Oh, my gosh. Look at these things. So these are poems that... I mean, they're written with very youthful essence. So yeah. Did you write them for children? Yeah. I mean, I wanted to write it... Uh, like as in uh, four kids, but at the same time to kind of give my uh, the way I grew up in the 80s as well. So I kind of just wanted to put two and two together, like kind of like take myself back to when I was growing up in the 80s, you know, and kind of right towards that. Yeah. So yeah. these these are all the candies, right, yeah. that you loved? <laughs> people loved i'm not yeah. a very a big uh, candy person really myself. oh yeah, yeah. i have a big yeah. chocolate 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 <laughs> chocolate hangover person i am um so you are going to be doing a book signing because the book yeah. is going to be released october 10th 
Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, October 10th, next Thursday. And you can get it on Amazon.com. I think it is a phenomenal gift uh, that you should put in stocking stuffers. Never too early. Order now, Amazon.com. And if you're local and you're in L.A., you can actually get Eric and Casey to sign your book because they're going to be at KGB Studios, right? 1640 North Spring Street. Yeah. I cannot believe I memorized that, of all things. Yeah, I, I know. I haven't even memorized I memorized it. an <laughs> address. It's downtown, and you're going to be signing. That's a Saturday, and you're going to be signing from like 7. Yeah, to 7 on. And then you're going to play yeah. a little acoustic set yeah. which we get a little flavor of right now yeah. why don't you grab your right. guitar and spoil us right. serenade me <laughs> <laughs> i love it so KB, kgb studios downtown saturday october 5th it's the chocolate and art show And I will never forget how I found this heart for you With the drop top down going 80 in my 62 In the jukebox burning body holly singing Peggy Sue Cause I will never forget how I felt this heart for you and I will never forget how I felt this heart for you With my devil in a dress, I'm a killer in my three-piece suit And my light-eyed girl telling the whole world she said I do And I will never forget how I felt this heart for you Oh, oh my love, I can't do this on my own When I'm on a run without you on my arm If you were gone, 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 gone. And I will never forget how I felt this side for you and I will never forget how I felt this hard for you. Da 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 if you weren't here beside me on my arm If you were gone, gone, gone If you were gone, gone, gone And I will never forget how I felt this heart for you And I will never forget how I felt this hard for you. Oh. Oh. Really, Eric, you didn't have to write that song for me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it the greatest to have your own show and then pretend everybody's talking about you? <laughs> that is awesome. Well, thank you. But I love your music. You brought it your ukulele. I did. I brought a, a little I want to hear more. We've got time. I'm oh, yeah? nice to have a little uka. You know, a lot of people say it's ukulele, but it's ukulele. 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 And about the book, they have a Twitter. So, like, follow this awesome, awesome book at Kids Culture. Seriously. It's, uh, it's good. You can read it to your niece, nephew, little brothers, sisters. It's a great gift. What are you gonna sing for me now? Who me? Yeah. What? Uh, I actually um, I was in Hawaii probably about a year ago, uh -huh. and I had never picked up a ukulele before, and I went out and I bought a just being inspired by being in Hawaii, went out and bought a ukulele and and uh, uh, I wrote this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Oh, blue eyes, I spy that freckle in your eyes. And I swear when I stare in that freckle invited me inside Cause in my and in my dreams and in my and in to take you on <laughs> I love the sound of a ukulele. It's so sweet. Yeah, it's isn't nice, it? right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very calming. I love it. So, Saturday, October 5th, everyone. The Chocolate and Art Show, book signing, KGB Studios. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Are it. You, can, will you sign this? Yeah, can I? Of oh, I'm like acting like it's mine already. <laughs> may I? Yes. Oh my Mother gosh. May I. I, I just, I'm so proud. Yeah. My gosh. Thanks for having me. Are you kidding? Yeah. So, mate, you can't leave until you sign this. Okay. That. Okay. It's either take off your shirt or sign yeah, it. Yeah, one or the other. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, you know when I was driving in, I heard that AIG uh, was found not guilty in the Michael Jackson trial. So they're not responsible for hiring that doctor. Wow. Well, you think about uh, all the money they spent. Right? I mean, I'd rather, there's so many other things I'd rather spend the money on than <laughs> give it to lawyers, right? Well, I mean, yeah. it's so ridiculous. I, I, I don't know. It, it everything is about money, right? I mean, everything that we're arguing, everything that we're arguing about with the healthcare, everything is about money. The government wants it, we want it. We, the world revolves around it. But I think if we take a step back and really just examine that our lives shouldn't make money the most important thing, yes, it's needed. But the love for money can actually be a very crippling, you know, demoralizing effect on us. And I think when when we remove it and we we look at uh, you know uh, people that that do things like you know I saw this video on Facebook of this this couple that rescued these baby bears out of garbage can. You know, it was probably the best 45 seconds of video on Facebook that I saw and it was so warm and it got like a million hits because we're starved for seeing good human acts of kindness that have nothing to do with money you know I don't know. I'm on my soapbox because I have a microphone in front of my face <laughs> and I can I you know I don't know I I I uh I heard Britney's uh song mm. her new one that just dropped today work work i i liked it a lot but is, I'm a, is I'm, that working for you yeah yeah work work i, I wish i had heard it more than once because then i could like, sing it for you but um <laughs> thankfully i do should have told me i would have got it for you, you <laughs> <laughs> it's good though I, it, it helps like to already be someone even if you disappear for a while because everybody wants to hear what it is that you've got going cooking and so they just put it out rather than someone that's a new artist right you have to fight through all of the political airwaves just to get your song out there right yeah there's plenty of politics yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah so take i don't nasally i can't take the nasally of her Who, Brittany. yeah yeah uh, yeah, I like her music. The the you mean her speaking voice? No, her speaking voice has no nasally at <laughs> oh, all. It's her singing <laughs> voice. She speaks normal. Yeah, and I'm like, what? How did you go from anyway? <laughs> well, it's because she was produced as a very young child. I you know those so. little dials. Mickey Mouse Club, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah with uh, Justin Timberlake yeah. and Christina, Christina Aguilera. What a great cast they had. If they only knew. 
Mm. It's kind of like the Mariners once upon a time when they had A. Rod and David Zagi <laughs> and the unit, you know? <laughs> All, and then th- that owner let him go, and look what happened, you know? Losers. I know. So how about them 49ers? <laughs> oh, there's the clock still giving me time to talk about the 49ers. Yeah. <gasps> we looked good. Really? You think? The last game? I mean, the first quarter, not so much, but yeah. uh, we pulled it around. I don't know if we should be favored by seven points against Houston no. Sunday night. No, it seems a little so. rude. A little bit. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm taking the under. I am. I'm. You know, I was a former Miss Nevada, so I can gamble. It's part of my heritage, my culture. Yeah, I'm just hoping Vernon Davis like knocks out that hamstring injury because you know I need him to put up some points this weekend. Oh, so do you have him on your fantasy? Yeah, I do. I love VD. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking. Does about. It, <laughs> doesn't everybody? <laughs> I'm look? looking around like um, I hope they don't want to ask me to join. <laughs> I will never take Dallas again, though. No. I don't care if you're over under, you guys. Or cowgirls, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I, seriously, there it was just. <laughs> anyways, I'm going to leave you with this. My, just my whole thing. I'm not very political. Like, well, I actually am, but I just don't like to say a whole lot about it. And there's just so much going on that I had to even let you know that I know a little bit. But I have my, my, my thoughts. But I believe that no matter our gender, our race our social or economic status, our religious belief, our sexual preference, our political opinion, our age, or our species, that we can all agree on one thing, that there is nothing better than a good poop. (laughs) I agree. I stand by that statement. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Sleep good, <laughs> sweet dreams. <laughs>